exactly what my intentions are. Don't want to boss anybody around. <laughs> I have hard enough trouble bossing me around. <laughs> and in fact, in the end, you don't even want to boss yourself around anymore, is it? So, all right, what's the time? Okay, let's get on to the subject we're here for. As per usual, I've got no idea what I'm going to say, but we'll see how we go. Um, <laughs> all right. One of God's primary laws to understand if you want to enjoy your life is the law of desire. You could call it also perhaps the law of passion, and I don't use passion in the negative sense of crisis, but rather passion in the sense of like having huge passionate desire, but it, this law is a major part of our soul being activated. And if we don't understand how it influences us emotionally and spiritually and influences our relationship with God, often we will flounder with many, many times of feeling quite despondent on the divine love path. You receiving God's love, in fact, is totally about this law. So let's look at how that works. Here's your soul. Here's God's soul. What causes God's love to enter your soul? Having a desire for it. The desire for divine love causes, a, causes the Holy Spirit, God's active force, if you like, that is of the highest order. It is, in fact, the way God transmits her love to her children. And so, therefore, it's the highest possible, and that's why we call it in the spirit world the Holy Spirit, because it's the highest possible active force of God. And... That Holy Spirit connects through this aspect of desire. That's what it means to have a longing for divine love. It means to have a desire, a passionate desire to be loved by God and also, of course, to love God. Now, remember there were three things we need on the divine love path to progress. Do you remember what those three things primarily are? A longing for, right, so a longing, remember we've got to use it, a, long, a longing for divine love, a longing for divine truth, and what's the third? What's humility? Yeah, it's actually a longing to experience your own emotions, isn't it? A passionate desire to experience your own emotions. Can you see in each case how much desire is in place? Can you see that? And can you see too, if I don't have a desire, for instance, to feel my own emotions, then straight away I'm blocking emotion. If I don't have a desire to, feel, to experience divine truth, then I'm blocking truth. If I don't have a desire to receive divine love, then I'm never going to be able to receive divine love because it's desire that activates God's soul. Your desire activates God's soul. When your desire is harmonious with love, truth and motion, your desire accesses God's soul. Now that's pretty powerful really, isn't it? To understand and think about and ponder about. Because all of these people say, you know, how complicated it is, how much meditation you've got to do to connect with God and become blissful and, you know, you've got to medicate three, four hours. Not medicate, meditate. <laughs> probably, probably interchangeable words, but anyway. And, 
<laughs> meditate three or four hours a day to, 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 to receive divine love and so forth. And in reality, it's not about the meditation and the blanking of yourself out or anything. It's about your passionate desire. And when you think about it, every time anyone around you has a passionate desire, don't you find it quite wonderful? Do you find that sort of resonates with you in your soul, like when somebody else has a passion? It doesn't, like someone's got a passionate desire for their motor car. You, know? you, you just sit back sometimes and just smile at yourself when you hear them have their, express their desire, don't you? Because it just amazes. It's amazing the transformation of the person that occurs when they connect with that passionate desire. Can you see that? And that happens in all sorts of aspects of their life. A passionate desire to have a family. Now there will be a high likelihood this family will be brought up in a manner that's harmonious with love. If you don't really care about having children and you have one, how do you feel then? Not very, very passionately desirous of having the child, so therefore there's this blockages to actually then having the child grow up with, with an environment of love. Desire enters every aspect of your being, if you think about it. You know, why do you eat something? Because there's this feeling inside that generates a feeling that I need, that I want to have something inside of me, food, to fill it. Now, sometimes that feeling will be an emotional injury, but it's still based around a desire that drives you, right? So in the end, it is a desire that is driving even desire to eat food. Because if you didn't have that desire, would you bother eating? Probably not, would you? If, if imagine God made you that you felt full all the time. So you'd look at this great big beautiful platter of you know fruit and vegetables and, and other dishes, right? And you'd look at it and you go, hmm, okay, and then walk off, right? <laughs> now, now if your body needed food but you didn't have a desire for it at all, what's going to happen to your body eventually? You just wither away, wither away. And who knows, it, sometimes, it depends how connected with God, it might take a few years, but, but other times, just a few months, and you're pretty much a skeleton, right? That's what anorexia is all about, the resistance of food due to emotional reasons, isn't it? So, so of course, it's desire that generates even uh, desire for food. And, of course, we can have desires that are disharmonious with love and truth. Or we can have desires that are harmonious with love and truth, can't we? We can have either. Now, the ones that are disharmonious with love and truth, when we act upon them, they have a certain flavour in terms of their result, compared with desires that are harmonious with love and truth. And we'll talk about the different flavour that results from those two desires. But you can see how if we want to connect to even to God and receive divine love, which is the transforming thing that transforms our soul, we are going to need to understand desire. Right? We're going to need to understand what affects desire, what controls desire within us, and how we can grow desire. Can you see that? We're going to need to understand those things. If we don't understand those things, how are we going to grow this connection with God if it's all based on desire. So the law of desire is a really important thing to understand and desire and passion is something very important to develop within yourself. Now a few weeks ago I asked to actually have an attempt to feel some of your desires and I know some of you did that, to feel some of your desires and start acting upon them. And one of the things you would have noticed is that when you started acting upon desires that were harmonious with love, you automatically felt some more joy in your life as a result. Right? And this is something we need to come to understand too, that when we act upon our desires that are harmonious with love and truth, then joy results. It's an automatic result when we act upon desires harmonious with love and truth. So, let's just draw that little equation up on our, if we want to have joy or happiness in our life, we, we must discover our desire. And this is the proviso that 
We want to make sure it's harmonious with love and truth. Then we want to act upon it. And if we do all of that, we will have joy. So you could say joy equals discovering your desire plus acting, making sure it's harmonious with love and truth and then acting upon it. If we add those three together, joy will result in our lives. Let's write another equation. Equals discovering desire plus being disharmonious with love and truth and acting upon it. Can you see it's almost the same equation with one primary difference? And the primary difference is the harmony with divine love and truth. So if we look at this aspect of joy and we look at this aspect of pain, we see that God automatically created a feedback system. Do you understand what I mean by a feedback system? Well, in electronics, the feedback system is used to stop things from going into squealing at you. So, for example, you know the sound system here. This sound system has a thing called a phase lock loop amplifier, which is getting my voice and putting it into an electronic signal. And what it does with my signal is it amplifies my signal, but to stop the signal from being amplified so much that it blows up the amplifier, there's a feedback system there that makes sure that it's kept within a certain range. Does that make sense? And this is what God has done with our desire. God has given us a feedback system so that we can actually see where the ranges of our desire that is safe to us and the ranges of our desire that are unsafe to us. And the feedback system is joy and pain. Does that make sense to everyone? Yeah? So, when I'm feeling pain, my feedback system is telling me that there is something about my desire here that's out of harmony with love and truth. So, for example, quite often people come up and say to me, oh, we've just broken up for a relationship and I'm devastated. Right? I'm devastated that we've just broken up. And, you know, I want them to be with me but they don't want me. And I feel really devastated. So devastation, would you classify it as a joy or a pain? Okay, so we've got pain. So we know we're in the pain. So straight away we know, because of the pain, that there must be something about a desire that's disharmonious with love and truth that I have that would cause me to feel this pain. Otherwise, I wouldn't feel the pain of this breakup. And people then say to me, that makes no sense to me at all. They say, if I love them, of course I'm going to feel pain. And I say, well, no, no, that's not true at all because every time we have pain, we're doing something in disharmony with love and truth. That can't be true. If you love someone, it doesn't automatically result in pain. In fact, if you love somebody, whether they love you back or not, it should result in your pleasure. Ivana, if we can have a mic down here. Um, well, how does that work when you have a desire to speak truth? Mm -hmm. um, so just say, uh, well, actually, last night I decided to speak truth to a, a guy that I've known for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. um, and I decided to tell him that I feel that he needs attention from me um, so that was my desire to be more honest with him but then it resulted in me feeling well not well yes sort of like pain in a way because I felt like 
um, because he couldn't understand why I felt he was needy. And um, so what we were saying is, you tried this equation, and what ended up was the pain equation for you. Yep. So the pain equation, you started with what you believed was a pure desire, desire to speak truth. Is that desire harmonious with love and truth? Yes, of course it is. And you acted upon it, did you not? Yes, and yet you still got pain. Is that just because I have um, an injury within me that I need to release? I'll tell you why it's happening. Okay. <laughs> that desire was a pure desire, and it wasn't that desire that caused you the pain. Because this is the equation that always causes joy, and you were in that equation. So the pain must be the result of another desire. <laughs> now I wish I didn't ask this question. <laughs> oh, no. So what's the real desire that you felt the pain about? You, you gave the clue in your statement. Oh, maybe that he misunderstood He misunderstood me. me. Yeah. He misunderstood me. So what was my desire? I wanted him to understand. Okay. <laughs> him to understand. N to understand. Now, is that desire harmonious with truth and love? No. Why? Because... That's me having an expectation. Yes. And that was the cause of your pain. Can you see the difference? Yep. You see, a lot of times what we do with our emotions is we think we're in this equation, but the pain is telling us we're in a totally different equation. <laughs> Does that make sense to everyone? All right. Lots of realisations happening here, so that's very good. All right. You see, a lot of times we want to tell ourselves that we're doing something with a pure desire. And a lot of times we do actually act upon a pure desire, but at the same time, we have another desire playing that ain't so pure. Right? And it's that desire that caused us the pain, not the truth desire. You see, and this is why the feedback system is very good, because we can see I'm in pain... I must have had a desire that was out of harmony with truth and love. I need to discover it. I need to know what that desire was. Because if my desire was harmonious with truth and love, I wouldn't feel the pain of it by its expression. Does everyone get that? Yeah? So, you can start seeing now that oftentimes we tell ourselves we're in this equation... But the result is equaling pain, which is telling us automatically that we're not in that equation. We're in something else playing. If we have a mic over there. Um, AJ, I find that this area is very tricky mm -hmm. because um, for a good part of my life, I thought I was in the first equation mm -hmm. and certain desires that I would have, I would act upon and to the best of my ability at the time, mm -hmm. I thought I was in harmony with love and truth mm -hmm. and I'd act upon the desire and it wouldn't equal pain. It would actually bring results. Okay. It would bring positive results, whether it was filling me up emotionally or producing results in the physical, but it was, I realized it was the pain was suppressed. Let's I, define yeah. pain. Yeah. <laughs> I'm reverting back to my childhood now. So. <laughs> All right, let's define pain. Pain is anything that causes you pain in your long-term future, in your short-term future, in your current state, in your physical body, in your spirit body or in your soul? That's fairly comprehensive, isn't it? Okay. You see, what most of the time we do on the earth is we only look at the physical or an immediate emotional benefits to what we do. But we have very little consideration of the longer term effects. Right? So let's... Uh, how did I just define pain? I can't remember. Uh, it's long term, that's right, long term, short term, immediate, immediate 
physical, emotional, spiritual, or soul or soul based. Now, many people say to me, oh, I'm doing everything in Mahami with love and truth all my life, and look, I've got cancer now. Now that's, that's telling you pain is, in this case, we've got a physical pain. We are doing things out of harmony with love and truth. Whether we know it or not, it's immaterial. Like, I've got an ache in my leg. What's that? Some pain? Straight away, I'm out of harmony, physical, so I know it. Emotional what might be in a relationship, the relationship breaks up. Uh, I've been in a relationship for five years and I just found out he was cheating on me. We had such a happy relationship. Uh, I'm sorry, but that's not true. You know, that's what you'd like to believe for, for five years, obviously. But if he was cheating on you for five years, your relationship was completely fake. Right? And therefore, for five years, we've been experiencing pain that we've been ignoring. Because the truth is, if I was emotionally connected with this person, man or woman... I would know something's wrong, would I not? So therefore I wasn't emotionally connected with them and I was ignoring the emotional connection because I'm ignoring my emotional pain and sooner or later some other pain occurs and that shows me that I was in ignorance in the, in the end. So sooner or later pain will come to my life if I'm in a state of disharmony with something. You can measure it immediately only if you are in a completely open emotional state. Other than that, you will never be able to measure the pain immediately. And in fact, the majority of times, you will even feel some of your pain is good. Because in the end, a lot of us have addictions. And we'll talk about addictions at another time for a full discussion. But the truth is that if I have an unhealed emotional addiction inside of myself... I am already in a state of pain. Can you see that? So if, let's say I'm alone and I've got no one in my life and the, my addiction is I've got to have someone in my life. I've got to have someone in my life. I've got to always have a man in my life or a woman in my life for me to be happy, let's say. Right? Now, if I just sat by myself in this state where I'm alone, I would be able to feel that pain if I'm honest with myself. Does that make sense? But most of us are not very honest with ourselves because we want to avoid our pain. Right? And that's called denial, which is a totally different subject to what we're discussing about. Right? Denial is when we choose to avoid our pain in order to receive something. So if I'm in a state of denial, what I will do is I'll go out and enter a relationship that I think I desire is my de I think my desire is harmonious with love and truth even perhaps, but it's not because it, was, it began from an addiction which if I had been sitting down by myself and just feeling, I would have felt it as pain. You see, a lot of the times what we do is we start to feel our pain and then what do we do with that? We want someone else to make it go away. And not just someone else. You know, why do you think alcohol abuse is such a big problem? Because we often choose something else or someone else to make our pain go away. Because the truth is, if you were in a state of bliss, do you think you'd want to go and take some ecstasy every night? Why would you want to do that if you're already in a state of bliss? Can you see, I'm exercising a desire, but the truth is right before I exercise a desire, I'm not even allowing myself to feel my own pain yet. And if I exercise a desire, even if you're, I think it's harmonious with love and truth, and I'm starting from a position of pain, things are not going to work out so good because I'm going to be exercising a desire that's disharmonious with love and truth. Because let's define disharmonious with love and truth. Every time I deny my own soul's emotions... I am in disharmony with love and truth. Right. So I can think that I'm living in passion and desire, but often not be living in passion and desire that's harmonious with love and truth. 
And quite often we can have exactly the same desire and yet one result in pain and the other in pleasure. And the reason why is if we begin the desire from a place of pain, we will always result in more pain. When I, let's, let me illustrate that. I might have a desire to give you the divine truth. Is that a pure desire or not? Well, it may not be. Because what's my intention? See, if my intention is to manipulate and control you for the rest of your life and make you dependent upon me, for a start, I'm not giving you divine truth anymore, am I? But if that was my desire, then the results are going to be pain, is it not? And yet I could say to you, I'm here giving this love and, and truth to you. Isn't this wonderful? Aren't I a wonderful person? It's so lovely. And, uh, and all those kind of things. And you could even begin feeling that. And yet in the end, I might have an intention that's damaging. And if my intention is such that I want to exercise my desire for my personal gain in terms of my being glorified or whatever, then straight away my desire is out of harmony with love and truth. And that will result in pain for me. Can you see that? So, so we need to actually allow ourselves to examine our desire and see the difference between it being in harmony with love and truth and being out of harmony with love and truth. And sometimes we can be very, we can seduce ourselves. Do you know what it's like to be seduced? And some of you might have been sexually seduced in your life or seduced into a you know, business that eventually went bad or seduced into something, doing something, you know, that when you were a child, remember during your teenage years when you went out and did something that later on turned out to be pretty stupid and you felt pretty embarrassed about? Often we get seduced by peer pressure, do we not, into doing things? Well, in the end, what we really get seduced with is our own addiction. And every time we're seduced, we are not in a state of love and truth, and we're also not in a state of pure desire. Because we're just doing really what somebody else wanted us to do. And that's pointless on this path, isn't it? What you want to do is work out what you want to do, and then do that. And if that's harmonious with love and truth, then you're going to experience the joy of acting upon that. And if that's disharmonious with love and truth, you're going to experience the sorrow that results from acting upon that. You go right up the back there. Hi, AJ. Um, something I've, I've done a bit in my life and I really don't want to do anymore is having a desire, probably in both of those equations, in harmony or out of harmony, and not acting. Uh, can you talk about that? Yes. Yeah. It's very important to act upon your desire for a lot of reasons. You see, if you act upon a desire that you believe to be harmonious with love and truth, and you act upon the desire, the equals, the equals part, the effect part, pain or joy, will tell you whether it was harmonious with love and truth or not. Does that make sense? But if you choose not to act at all, how are you ever going to know whether your desires were harmonious with love and truth at all? Yeah, it's a pretty painful place. It is a very painful place. And when we don't act, that is because of terror and fear. Right? And that is telling us that we actually do have terror and fear inside of us that we need to address. Now, what would be some reasons or some fear-based reasons of why you wouldn't want to act? You want to give some personal feelings about that? Um, oh, just uh, fear of making a mistake, you know, doing the wrong thing or... All right, let's look at making a mistake. That was the yeah. first one. Doing the wrong thing. Yeah. Let's look at making a mistake. Where would that have come from? Where would that have come from? Well, what happened when you were little when you made a mistake? Well, I don't know what happened to me and most of the time it was the corporal punishment system, right? When you made a mistake, right? So I was there... You know, at school, writing with my left hand. And every time somebody caught me doing it, whack across the fingers, right? So, so mistake, you know, right with my right hand now. Like, so straight away, 
a fear of making mistakes comes from this feeling inside of me that I'm going to be punished and hurt. So that needs to be released emotionally from me before I'm going to act. Or you could choose to act and allow that fear to pop up straight away because it will pop up pretty much straight away. Yeah, I'm hoping to do that in the near future. Yep. Yeah, from Good. now on. Yep. So, so there's, a, there's a few different ways you can handle the system, isn't there? Like knowing that if you act, there is always going to be a result. Now, if the result is pain and we think we were acting in harmonious with love and truth, then there has to be some disharmony in there for there to be some pain. I'll give you an example. I've decided that I'm going to act in harmony with love and truth all my life, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell everybody that I'm Jesus, right? <laughs> this was a decision I made five years ago or so. Because that's who I am, you know, and, uh, and so I've just got to tell everyone the truth. So I go to the first persons and tell them the truth. That was my boys, my sons, my two sons, Tristan and Caleb. And uh, they reacted pretty well, right? There was not, not too much drama there and Caleb said to me, yeah, I think it's probably right, actually. And Tristan said, well, I'll give you three months and we can work it out. But either way, it was pretty, <laughs> it was pretty like, it was pretty, you know, even-handed sort of. There was no physical pain for me. That was interesting. So I go along to the next person, tell them the truth. That's my mother, right? My mother coming to visit. <laughs> and, and now there's like a fair bit coming at me, right? So there's some condescension and then there's like worry and then I can feel her going to this state of, oh, no, he's going to kill someone or kill himself or whatever and, you know, there's going to be a Kool-Aid thing down the track somewhere and <laughs> like all those kind of things coming up for her inside of her. Emotion. Of course, she never voiced any of these things aside from some of the condescension and some of the worry about my state of mind. Well, I come away from that feeling like that was quite painful. What was my problem? Yeah, the pain wasn't the result of me saying the truth. The pain was the result of me getting rejected. Does that make sense? So I then had to go in to feel the rejection because that's the emotional error that I need to release. And the pain was a result of me being treated condescendingly by my mother. So I had to actually go into that emotion because that's been there a lot of my life too. And I had to go into that emotion and release that emotion. And another painful part of it was that she then decided that it was too much for her to handle and she wanted to tell some other people about it who then got her to tell some psychiatrists about it who then got her to tell my, my, uh, my doctor about it who then when I went in to get a, an insurance assessment so that I get some extra loans, he denied my assessment which means that my business just went bang. That was quite painful. What was my problem? Why was it painful to lose my business? Because I'd built up like, you know, three and a half, four million dollars worth of property. I thought I was going quite good. I was going to keep going for a little bit longer and uh, finish off some deals and whatever else. And, and it was painful because I didn't want to feel all of that was a waste. I just didn't want to feel an emotion. So I had to feel that emotion. And then I had to feel the emotion of being betrayed by my mother. So I had to feel that emotion. Can you see, those painful emotions weren't the result of me acting in harmony with love and truth. They were actually the result of me having an unhealed emotional error in me that was confronted by the act of truth. And that was the result of the pain and I had to feel the pain. See, a lot of times what happens is we go and tell the truth with the expectations that we currently have emotionally involved with that. And when those expectations are not met, we feel the pain of the expectation not being met. That's telling me that it was great that I told the truth, but some of my other desires, the expectations that I have, were in this category, in disharmony with love and truth. Does that make sense? All right. Well, what we'll do now is we'll have a break and I want to continue this subject of, uh, of discussing about desires and all the different aspects of desire. Have a good lunch period. <laughs>